Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of No Balls, No Glory. This is the one and only the people's champion in the building. Let me let me let me let me rephrase that. I told y'all I was go do something different, man. This is the National Semi-Pro Baseball Hall of Famer, the people's champ, and I am not here by myself. I am here with I am here with the National Semi-Pro Baseball Hall of Famer, Coach Corey, in the building. Coach Corey, introduce yourself. What's up, everybody, man? It's Coach Corey, man. Reaching one, teaching one, man. Thursday night, man. From the loop to the 10, we back at it again, man. That's all I can say right now. Cardinals kicked off today. Man, yeah, they did. They didn't do bad, man. Hey, they man, did, like I, but they didn't. Hey, like I say, going forward, I will address this. I will address the National Semi-Pro Baseball Hall of Famer, Coach Corey, and address me as the National Semi-Pro Baseball Hall of Famer, the people's champ. Damn it. That's what we are, man. Don't call us nothing but that. The National Semi-Pro Baseball Hall of Famers. That's what we are. Damn it. <laughs> man, look at old Ozzy holding a baby at the game, man. What's going on? You watched the game I, today, man. Man, Ozzy kissing baby. I saw Willie there, though, man. Willie, hey, one man. of my guys, man. Willie, one of my favorites, man. Ozzy's supposed to kiss babies, man. That's what he do. Ozzy kiss babies, man. Yes. <laughs> That's what he's supposed to do, man. That's in Ozzy's job description, Kiss Babies Coach. Yes, the wizard. He done went Not, from backflips to the baby dips, huh? The back pain management to, <laughs> to babies to backflip beer. Oh, my God. I got to go buy me a case of that, man. I don't What's even that? know if I'm going to drink it, but I'm going to get it because it's got Ozzy on it. You gonna get it for the memories and stuff, coach. Yeah, for the backflip itself. What you do? What, what you gonna do if it's good though, man? I mean, go, I don't know get... if I'm even tasted. I just want the commemorative can. Oh, uh, okay. Ain't nothing like the commemorative can, coach. I got this box of Wheaties, man. You got Ozzy's Ozzy's Wheaties. Yes, sir. Oh man, you got to set up then, huh? He said he yes, got sir. the Wheaties, man. Oh, in fact, man. I believe it's his Hall of Fame box of Wheaties. That's even more significant, man, right there. The Hall of Fame box of Wheaties, man. You can't beat that. Man, it's one of them. This is either Go Go or where your ring at, Coach. Uh, my ring is right here, man. Man, I got one requirement, man. Every time we do no balls, no glory, make sure you put this on, brother. <laughs> my ring is right here. Make sure you put this on, brother. <laughs> my ring. Put on the glory, brother. <laughs> my, my brick. Hey, man. And my plaque ain't got here yet. <laughs> Yes, indeed, man. Man, what else, man? What's the way? Hey, was it snowing down there today? No, nah, but it was a little cold, brother. A little cold. A little cold in the loop. Hey, man, everybody was at Keena Plaza, though, man, kicking it today, man. Any time you watch the game and they got on hoodies and they got on the masks to cover their face, it's a little cold, dog. It was cold, huh? But I will say, man, man somebody need to tell Mason Wynn how to wear his uniform. <laughs> Help that young brother out, man. He had his black ski mask on on top of his hat. Please help the young guy out, man. Instead of having it's... it on his head and but then he, uh... the hat on uh -huh. top of the ski mask. Come on, man. Somebody help the young brother out. You know he new to the game. 
He's still young, man. What you expect, coach? He's yeah, young. You, go like you got to blame the vets for that, man. The vets yeah, should man. say, hey, hey, young fella, this how you wear that, man. You don't wear it like that, yeah. young fella. Come on, come on over here. Let me show you how this done. Play up. Let me show you how to do it, young fella. Come on, man. Get out, get out, get out your hey, get out your feelings, man. We teammates now, man. Unlike the NFL, man, when y'all do the rookie thing with the NFL, it's a completely different game, man, with the NFL, man. They gotta realize that a completely different game, coach. And we're gonna talk about some NFL tonight, too, man. We showing the hell is. We're gonna definitely talk about some NFL tonight, buddy. Because uh, it's been some crazy stuff going on today and yesterday. Oh, my God. Man, what else, Coach, man? Talk to me. What else is going on with you, man? Yeah. Oh, let, be, before we get started, I got to tell you, hey, next Friday, a week from tomorrow, the second annual Captain David Dorn Trivia Night is going to go on, man. I'm telling you, if you're down anywhere near Festus, you don't want to miss that fun, man, because it's going to be fun on top of fun, on top of fun, on top of drinks, on top of fun, on top of fun, man. Right. Come out and watch people champ kiss babies and run for president. Like Ozzy Smith? <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, Coach, did you say like Ozzy? <laughs> Why do people champ get his eyes on? <laughs> Did you say get my eyes on, coach? Yes, sir. Hey man, you just say you just say get my eyes on, dog. That's cold blooded, man. So that's get exactly my... what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go smile and kiss babies up. Yeah, you might bring an occasional drink back for somebody. Am I gonna take any pictures, coach? Oh. Uh, a whole lot of them. <laughs> say, Coach, I'm taking a lot of those pictures up. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That is too funny, Coach. <laughs> hey, Coach, you better not take no picture of me taking pictures with other people and uh, shaking hands and stuff. Oh, I'm bringing my camera this year. I already know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> And if I be, deny, hey, I'm, what you say? If I deny, you go, you all had a proof put. I'm gonna up. be like the paparazzi, baby. <laughs> Coach, did I'm you say you'll be like the paparazzi, man? Yeah, I'm gonna be T M Zizzle. T M Z over here. <laughs> you know, Boy, that's crazy, man. That is so crazy, man. People ain't gonna believe it, man, unless they see it. Unless they see it, huh? If they see the people's champ walking around hugging and kissing on babies, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, man, that's cold blooded. They got to see man. it to understand it. I feel some type of way, man. Hey, man. <laughs> What's up, it's man? Okay, you'll get over it. Tag, man. You, you act see? like that's all I do, man. Hey. All right, now your game going on right here tonight, Bandy and LSU. Baseball? Mm hmm Although LSU did uh, get taxed by uh, – Southern. Southern yes. got them again, huh? Yeah. Man, so what that tell you, Coach? Porter is alive and kicking. What would you say? The border is alive and kickers. I'm telling you, man, hey, you go down there, hey, unless you would have never thought they got thumped again by Southern. That's what got, hey, that's what got, hey, Percy Payton in the building. That's what got, uh, I think that's what got Carrick to Memphis and then from Memphis to Mizzou, man. That one, hey, that's what you call a signature win. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, you know what's funny? This portal thing is getting so crazy. I mean, what you say? it's beyond crazy. Oh, yeah. 
because kids are now asking for money and turning down money that people are offering. They turn it down lots and lots of money, man. Lots and lots of money, man. Like when we was talking about Caitlin Clark the other night, man. Uh, I just don't think that's gonna be a good fit for her, man. Hey, man, you got these guys with this pride. They ain't gonna let her. They ain't gonna let her go in there and bust their ass like that, man. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. If, you th if you think they're going to let her go in there, you got another thing coming, man. The big three it would be the worst decision she could ever make. Could you, did you say, Coach, did you say the other night that she'll lose value by going playing that jump? Yeah. Yeah. That That's not even a major. I mean, it's major for – Older guys that's been in the league, but you're talking about a kid that ain't even been in the league. That's going to be your first stop with a bunch of retired NBA guys. What what is that? What does that do for your career? That's career suicide, man, to be honest with you. That is career suicide, dog. Be honest with you. I don't know. I just think it would be a bad move. Maybe, maybe I'm missing out on something. Maybe I mean, maybe I don't know something. But I, I, just, I personally think it's a bad move. That's just me. I think it's a bad move too. To be honest with you, dog. It don't make no sense to do it. it. It just don't make no earthly sense, man. Be honest with you, man. It don't make no earthly sense to do it, man. And speaking of doing it, man, let's go and do this. Hey, let's jump off from these sports, man. Person, we talk about a little bit of sports, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a whole lot of this, a whole lot of that. A little bit of Nick and a little bit of Knack. That's what we do, man. We talk the facts. <laughs> That's smooth, baby. Eh? Smooth R&B, baby. Smooth R&B. That's what we do, man. We smooth talk. We walk a smooth talk, talk a smooth walk. Hey, man, you know, we was just talking about the transfer portal. Let me give you a prime example. Uh -huh. Everybody is familiar with AJ Store, correct? Right. He asked Kansas for a million. Uh huh. The Jayhawk KU countered and said seven hundred fifty thousand. Take it or leave it. In his NIL, you know. What did he do? Did he take it? Hell no, he left. He said no, he left. So when, so when, when does, when does seven, when does seven hundred and fifty thousand ain't enough, man? Right. God damn, help me out. Help me figure this one out, man. When is seven hundred fifty thousand American dollars not enough? Yeah, he asked for a million though. He's like, hey, man, I need a million to come to Kansas. Nil. Kansas is like, nope. Seven bit. Take it or leave. Man. He's like, good luck. You can get at somebody else. That's a Pretty damn much. shame, man. But the rumor is Illinois offered him the million. To come there and play at Illinois? Yeah. And he turned that down, too. No, he ain't said nothing yet. So it's still to be found out if he decides to go to Illinois. But you get a school like Duke or Carolina to swoop in who got real healthy alumni pockets. And that's what I'm going to say, real healthy 
alumni pockets at those universities. And uh they can give you, they can give them a million or two million dollars. But this NIL has just got really man, this NIL has just uh got real crazy, man. Yeah, but when but when you think about the North Carolinas, the Dukes, you know, the Kentuckys, some of them, some of the blue bloods. They all yeah. probably got pretty big alumni that could probably do that. Yeah. But you coming in there for the opportunity to win championships. Those programs are getting all Americans after all Americans after all Americans. Five star all Americans. So if you think you're going to try to strong arm them over some gonna money, happen. it ain't going to happen. You, 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 that's a losing battle. You might be able to strong arm Illinois, Purdue, uh, Marquette, mm -hmm. you know, Pittsburgh, Indiana. Yeah. Some of those schools, you might be able to strong arm them because uh -huh. you are. Because you're a big name and and all that, but it's like, come on, dog. Come on, man. They offered you seven hundred and fifty thousand, and you said no to one of the blue bloods. Damn. And when you, and, and when you, when Coach Corey talk about the blue bloods, you talk about the Dukes, the North Carolinas, the Kansas, and the Kentuckys. And yeah. I, I would even consider you throw UCLA in the blue bloods. Because of their tradition and their history, so one of them schools yeah, offer you. I mean, man. and you could even you can even expand it out further than that. You can even say, you know, some some Arkansas, you know, so back when Nolan Richardson was, you know, in his heyday with his Arkansas team, they were they were blue bloods. Syracuse, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, come on, man. Some, these, these kids have got to realize what good is. I don't because think they at, realize. Because at some point, you know, and I hate to say it, when this shit gets out of hand, the government's going to get in and stop it. The government going to get in and start regulating this shit more. Watch. Yeah, they, they're going <laughs> to stop it. Because, oh, yeah. because, and not only is the government going to stop it, professional sports are going to stop it. Mm hmm Because you're, you're impacting their bottom line now. Yeah, and, and, and what this is doing is driving the market up for Major League Baseball, NBA, you know, NFL, if it gets there. All it is is pushing them to levels that they may not want to go. When yeah. you think of these billion dollar owners, if if they're having to give kids two and three billion dollars out of college, what do you think they're gonna ask for when they make it to the professional? How are you gonna be able to come up to those kids and sit down and negotiate a contract when these kids have already made eight, nine, ten million dollars? Right. And in college and now they're moving to the professional ranks. How, man, what, what bargaining tool do you have with them? Very little. Man, we got Dino's that fell in the building. DJ Dino's in the building. Beats by the source. Finished second, man. In a stiff competition, man. We wow, so I wasn't going to say second. Uh, I lost to the all to the eventual champion. So the, God damn uh, it, we say you finished second. Shit, <laughs> leave it at that. You finished second. Shit. <laughs> Dino's introduce yourself. Uh man, what up, sports fans? It's your boy Dino's, aka Beast by Thesaurus. Man, I'm tired. It was a long night, but it was a great evening, man. I, I met a lot of cool cats. Uh, I heard some dope beats, man. It was it was a good experience, man. I had some people come out and support. I appreciate that. 
Uh, I'm a reset man. I'm gonna I'm get back in the lab. I'm gonna come back hot and heavy for May. So uh, I'll keep you deep, keep y'all posted on that next date. Oh, that's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Hey, did you hear the y'all hear the news? MLB, the Athletics to make their home in Sacramento for the 25, 26, and twenty seventh season. Damn, I guess Vegas and fell through the cracks. No, nah, they Vegas. don't. No, nah, they don't have a ballpark. They have nothing. Vegas. They have nothing in order scratch. for them to get to Vegas, they don't have to build a ballpark. And Oakland's lease was going to be up. Oh, okay. So they got to have somewhere to play. Yeah. So, so do they? Do they go and build the ballpark? And we saw the virtual ballpark that that was proposed. Do they go build the ballpark and head on to Vegas, man? Because if they break ground, this just say they break ground this fall. The stadium should be ready by at least 26. The way they get stadiums up, it'll probably be ready by the 25 season, for real. Well, they got, they got three years now because they stuck in sack, sack time. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that contract is locked in, ain't it? Yeah. For three years. Well, do you think they eventually if, if the Sacramento fan base come out there, are they gonna be the Sacramento Athletics? I mean, there's no baseball up there. So what 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 if the athlete the A's ownership go to Sacramento and say, Hey, we like this. Sacramento City of Sacramento embrace us, they love us. Do they stay or do they still head to greener pastures in Vegas? I don't know how that would work because, you know, it's all contractual shit. But I think, you know. Yeah, and you got to have the, the, the owners got to approve it. Yeah, the owners got to approve the move now because you're relocating to another city. And I know they're going to shoot it down because Vegas is a bigger market than Sacramento. Oh, yeah. A huge market. And then some of the owners, when they go out there for a weekend series, shit, they can go out there and the have high, a look. High, high stakes room. <laughs> hey, hey, they go to the high stakes room. A lot of the owners can take their ass to the to the bunny ranch. They can they can go to the ranch and stuff. Some of the brothels. <laughs> hey, they can go to some of the adult brothels. <laughs> the brothel brothels, dog. <laughs> yes. Hey, we talk about. Party old owners, man. They can go to some of these brothels and stuff, man. Hey, hey, you think you think Robert Kraft don't enjoy going out to Vegas and stuff, man, when the Patriots got to go out there and play? Man, look, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the soundboard tonight because I, I would be I would be climbing, but man, he didn't sit his ass down. <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. Shohei Otani hits his first home run of the day for the Dodgers and everything. He break his drought. The Cardinals held Otani pretty much in check uh, over the weekend and everything, man. But uh, he, he he broke out today and everything. Very, very shocking, man, because uh, Otani was tearing the cup off the ball in spring training, man. So how much, how much is Otani getting paid per game? It's for a quick – What's his contract? I think he deferred a lot of that money. Did yeah, but I know he's gonna get paid at the end of it. Oh yeah, he he go he gonna get a nice handsome. Chunk what, was of the, what was that full contract? I'm just gonna divide shit by one sixty two. Hold on, man. Oh, Shohei Otani's contract. Ten years, seven hundred million dollars, buddy. Hold on, I might not be zero with them. And he deferred six hundred and eighty of it. To after the con- he deferred six hundred and eighty million of that contract to uh uh until after the contract expires in twenty thirty three. Two more zeros. There we go. Seven hundred million. <laughs> hey man, he deferred yeah, by 10 because 10 year deal. Okay. Uh-huh. 
So that's seventy million a year. Yeah, I bet sixty-two. My man is getting four hundred and thirty. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, four hundred and thirty-two thousand and ninety-eight dollars per game. Per and we ain't even talking about the game that he sits out. That he got to sit out of. Half a million dollars per game. Hey, and the crazy thing about that, he deferred of seven hundred million. He deferred six hundred and eighty. So basically, he has a ten year, uh, ten year twenty million dollar contract. So he's getting two million dollars a year right now. He's That's all getting. Bad. Hey man, hey, he must don't have no expenses, dog. Ten years, twenty million dollars. That's two million dollars a year, dog. That's crazy, man. Do you think I don't even know, man? Yamamoto getting paid $55 million this year. That's crazy, man. Yamamoto hey. say he want this money up front. Hell with that. Like, Hell with the third conversation. Man, you better fucking tell your kids to play baseball. Max Scherzer, Max Scherzer, $52 million this season. Aaron Judge, $40 million this season. And the reason I say play baseball is because there's multiple leagues. A, B, there's more positions. C, you can play longer. D, contracts are pretty much given. Justin Verlander, 40. I'm wrong, coach. With basketball, you only got 12 players per team, and only, only so many players get the max contracts. Right. You could be an average baseball player and make like 10 times more than a football player. That's crazy. Far less risk. Far less risk. Man, that is just bananas, man. The price, the cost, man. Hey, man. Then you sit back, you look in uh, Verlander 43, Altuve 41, Trout 35 and a half. Uh, Jacob DeGrom, 40. Corey Seager, 34 and a half. Anthony Rendon, 38. Garrett Cole, 36. Carlos Carrera, 36. Juan Soto, 31. Bryce Harper, 26. And Giancarlo, 32. So between no, John Car Giancarlo and Aaron Judge, 43 and 32, that's $75 million right there. Hey, call, him two, call him by his real name, Call him by his real name, BP. What is it? it ain't Giancarlo, Giancarlo. He changed that shit. What's his actual birth name? <laughs> Giancarlo. It's a basic-ass basic name. <laughs> we say it's basic, huh, D? Basic. Oh, let me look him up. That's, that is so crazy, though, man. All these crazy contracts that's out there, man. Yamamoto, man, hey, he hey, he getting paid uh, 50, $55 million a season. But is that a smart move on uh, Shohei's part? I, I, I'm quite sure that $680 million that's deferred is probably in a uh, in an account that's drawing interest. What you think? Hey, Coach, what you think? You think that uh, – Six hundred and eighty million dollars. Show hey deferred is in a uh, interest bearing account. It has to be. <laughs> so basically, in the next ten years, that six hundred and eighty could be close to a billion dollars, huh? Yeah, it has to be because he hasn't been able to pay for it if something happens to it. Oh wow! Oh man, my bad, y'all. My mic was all the way. Up. I was. Connect to the wrong mic. That's why y'all couldn't hear me. Oh man, that's why it crazy. sounded like I was sounded like I was in the sunken place. Sound like using a goddamn tunnel, dog. But my hey. bad, my bad. But yeah, Mike yeah, Stan. It has to be uh, in a uh, an interest bearing. 
It has to be, man. 680 million sitting out there, man. I think that's almost hey, that's a sweet deal, boy. No, but I'm, I'm is, saying the only way they will let you do uh that type of contract is you have to put it in the interest bearer. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause uh cause I cause cause I know one thing for sure. If you ask me to defer money, it better be in an interest bearing account. And and at the end of high the term, yield, high yes. yield interest. And I want hey. some fucking stock, some stock options. You say you want some Dodger stock options, huh? I want some stock options. <laughs> Damn. Most most it, of that is probably is probably in stock. Because yeah, you gotta girl. think about like most of these athletes and celebrities, most of these most of these people aren't getting paid cash. They're they're getting paid in stock. Yeah. Hey man, the Mets knocked off the Tigers two to one today, giving the Tigers their first loss of the year. The Cardinals, uh, Spall Ship, uh, Chip Schumacher's return to Bush Stadium. They gave Chip a, a, a standing ovation today, man. They, they give everybody a standing ovation. <laughs> they hey, should. Chip, hey, Chip, Chip, what? Stubby, hey. stubby clap, stubby clap returns to Bush. <laughs> Hey man, Skip Schumacher deserve a standing ovation for being smart enough to get out of this damn shit show before it got started. <laughs> oh, I wish I had my soundboard. <laughs> oh my god, they won eight to five, man, and uh, this they is, about to uh, lose to a team that hadn't won a damn game yet. And they are Marlins are still zero and eight. Put it like this: Do you think the Marlins because this is a four game series? Do you the think Marlins the Marlins are one or two of these games before they get out of here? So the Cardinals will give the Marlins their first win of the season, right? It's, it's gonna happen because they damn near lost today. They actually should have lost today, man. Had it, had <laughs> it not had it not been for a Reyes putting that motherfucker on his toe. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, the Guardians beat the Twins four to two. The Pirates beat the Nationals seven to four. All right, they didn't uh, get snowed out. And game two of the doubleheader because the Mets won the first game, uh, two to one. And uh, they uh, they made up. They won. Then the Tigers won the second game six to three. Well, t- take that back. Tigers won the first game. It was a makeup from April 2nd. They won that game 6-3, to three, and then they lost their first one tonight. And then right now, you got the Royals uh, up 2-1 to one on the White Sox in Kansas City, man. So man that's I can't what we wait got. to go to a game in, up there again, man. And KC, love- yeah, you, like, you, you like Kaufman Stadium? Yep. Yeah, Coffin Stadium is nice. Very nice. Hey, man, uh, Seton Hall, boy, 2024 NIT champions, squeaking past Indiana State, 79 to 77. Close barn burner game, man. Seton Hall is your 2024 NIT champions, man. Hey, hey. Shout out to uh the the Lady Billigans, man. They in the NIT uh championship, championship. for the women's side. The Lady Billikins? The Lady Billikins are in the chip for the NIT for women. Yes, they are. Hey, Who man. they playing, Coach? Uh, I forgot. Let me give me one second. I'm on the hunt, man, because people have quietly slept on the Lady Billikins all year. And I, I, I want to – I've been meaning to say that for a while because they have they have quietly had a really good season. They've been uh-huh. really consistent. And they've really, really, you know, gelled. And they've came on towards the end of the season. So I'm not surprised that they're doing what they're doing. Because they have, they have, uh, they really earned what they was doing. They're playing Minnesota, and because they weren't expected to 
to get this far instead of them having a home game at Schaefer's Arena, they're playing the game at SIU Edwardsville. Damn. Because Schaefer's is booked for a concert. Damn. That's crazy. That but that crazy. game is on Saturday at two o'clock on CBS Sports. So I get I, I guess the people that was booking the concert at the shape and said, Oh, the ladies ain't gonna make it this damn far. Let's go bring a who who gonna be who at concert? Is it a comedy show concert? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I know that they're playing the game at SIU Edwardsville because the shape it's arena is booked for a concert. Man, man, man. It says book for a concert, man. Yep. I'll tell you who is at Shape of Arena. Don't say sexy red. Please don't. Man. Uh, if that's what it is, they ought to boot their ass out. There's nothing sexy about red. They ought to make her ass play at the Alton Amphitheater. The Zach and Brown Brad, Band. Zach Brown? Zach Brown Band. Cardinal Glenn sponsored by Clark Cardinal Glennon's Children's Hospital. That's why it's not uh, good. Uh, hey, hey, and and Glennon Live with special guest Adam Wainwright. <laughs> Wayne know it's gonna be playing with the band on Friday on Saturday night, coach. Uh no, nah, he's probably opening for them. Oh man. As you know, he's on his, his tour now. Damn, his country man. music tour. That's why it's not getting moved because of two things. Because of Adam Wayne, right? No. Because <laughs> of Cardinal Glennon? Yes. <laughs> you are not about to have something with children's name on it get moved. And I That's, get it, but the game is scheduled for two o'clock. Uh huh. I would have rather them move the game time to noon or something. Noon, eleven, anything other than take this home game away from them because they've earned it. They shouldn't have never took the home game away from. Them. But I mean. Who at the Scott Trade Center, man? Something going on at Scott Trade? Probably the Blues. Damn. But you know where they really should have moved it to? Where? The Family Arena. That would have been a perfect spot. You know that? Yep. That would have been a perfect spot, man. That's why I really wish they would have moved it, but you know they don't like moving shit out in the county. But that family arena would have been a perfect spot, though, man. And and you know what the crazy thing about it is, nothing going on at Scott Trade on Saturday. Nothing. Nothing at all, man. Yep, they could. Only thing I think they would be worried about is ticket sales and the size Fill of that thing. Filling, filling the place out and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why I said a family arena would be would have been a great venue, man. Because it's about the same size. It is. I don't it know is. what the seating is for Schaefer's, but I know a uh, family arena probably holds about fifteen to seventeen thousand. So it's about the same, basically, right? That's Shafers. So I that would have been a perfect fit for them, man. If they I think Shafers uh, holds that. about that much. Wow. Then, you know, when you were gone, Coach Corey made a good idea. Instead of taking the Lady Billikens home game away from them, why they didn't just uh, move the game to Shafers? I mean, not to Shafers, but uh, to the Family Arena. They probably still would have considered that a home game. 
It's supposed to be a home game. Supposed to be a home game for them. Is it? Yeah, they were supposed to play at Schaefer's. Oh, that that was already scheduled. That was the scheduled venue for the championship. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. You're right. And then I told them, I said, uh, there's nothing going on at the Enterprise Center. Blues don't play this weekend there. It's basically open, but uh, Coach Corey made a it's valid point. It's probably too big. It's probably too, too big. big. Too big too of big. a venue. Speaking of big, not trying to get off the subject, so the Frozen, uh, not Frozen 4, but um, the regional for the uh, hockey championship, and people were pissed off because they picked the Centene Ice Rink out in uh, Maryland Heights, and it only holds maybe 5,000. Uh, it don't hold that many. Maybe 2,000. And people were all pissed off because, you know, they – they split the tickets between the teams. They get like 80% of the gate, and then there's only 20, 20% of the tickets left over for the general pop. And so a lot of people didn't get to go. <laughs> so they was like, why the hell you picked this little rinky-dink-ass rink and you knew this was coming? I didn't find out the reason why, but I know I think we do have the Frozen Four either next year or the year after, and that, that's going to be down at uh, Enterprise. Oh, wow. Now Man. it's time for the NCAA to give us one because we we way overdue. Damn, like we could at least have a regional. Exactly. Give us the Sweet 16 and, and the Elite Eight. I still call it the Grade Eight. I don't like Elite Eight. I, I'm old school. I like I like Grade Eight. The Grade Eight. And speaking of Final Fours, hey, we're gonna hit, we're gonna top the women first, man. Women's college basketball Final Four is set. Starting kicking off tomorrow night at six o'clock. You got the uh, North Carolina State Lady Wolfpack versus the South Carolina Gamecocks, man. Uh, what you think, South I think Carolina? It'll, it'll be close in the first half, and then South Carolina pull away. I think it would be too, man. I got South Carolina winning that game, man. I got South Carolina winning that game. Uh, eventually beat them by 20. But then, like you said, the first half going to be close, but then Don Staley going to go in and make adjustments like she always do. And them girls hey, just play on another level, man. Just to kick back what Dino was saying, that ice rink only holds 2,500. That's why I said, like 2,000. And then mm. when they reconfigure for outdoor concerts, it can hold another 2,000, so max 4,500. But you That's, can't get forty five hundred for hockey in there. No, you got way too many people. Like you need at least like Family Arena would have made more sense. Yes, because mm-hmm. the Family Arena holds like what fourteen, seventeen. Damn, it's bigger than that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's some. I think it's seventeen. I'm not sure. It might be less than that. But it's hey. definitely a better venue than than that place. Way it's like a pub, it's like a public ice rink. It's not really meant yeah. to accommodate something that size. Well, yep. and you you know how Centene even got to be there? Give it to us. Money. No, the owners of Hollywood Casino wanted that. I was working there when they when they went through the whole deal about getting that rink there, because originally that rink was supposed to be in Creve Court Park. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, it was originally supposed to be across from Creve Court Lake. Hmm. Damn. Like where, where, where they got the disc golf course and all that? Yeah, down a little bit further towards that man's uh, garden. Mm. In that area back there, right across from that parking lot, <clears throat> that lower parking lot, directly across from there, there's a great big open land mm-hmm. is where they were supposed to build there, but the city of of Creve Corps backed out. Mm. So, so they moved the, to owner, Heights. the owner they from Hollywood the Casino jumped in on it was like, we got all this land here coming down this runway to the casino. 
we can offer you a spot to build it here. They didn't take advantage of it. So Hollywood, what Hollywood did was pitch that to them, but Hollywood is the reason that they have the outdoor concert venue. Because Hollywood was more interested in the outdoor concert venue because, as you know, Hollywood Casino owns the amphitheater as well. So wow. when they when they couldn't get artists for the amphitheater, they could book them at Centennial. Hmm. And they I could know. put they could put the 4500 there, but they could also use that big open parking lot to get more there. people. Because if you remember, Nelly had a concert at Centene. An outdoor concert. All the overflow from that concert was into that parking lot into Hollywood. So that's where they made all the extra money from was that overflow from the ticket sales from Centene and into that parking lot that Hollywood owned. Hmm. So wow. Hollywood was smart like a fox in getting them there because now not only do they have that, but they can get the youth hockey teams and stuff in there. And make it more for the community. And use that rink. And where are they going to park? When they can't park at Centene, where's that overflow going to park? On the backside in Hollywood's yep. parking lot. Are they going to be charged? No, but you know why they don't charge them? That's a hell of a walk. No, no, no. You know why they don't charge them? Because they want them to come into that casino and spend some money. What do you think those parents are going to do when those kids are there all day playing hockey? They're going to be at that casino. They're going to go across to the casino. <laughs> and, and God forbid, you may have some of the parents that may stay at the casino. That at a too. At the hotel there. Imagine these teams coming in from out of town to play at Centi. You have a hotel right there that they can stay in. The kids are going to be across the parking lot playing God knows how many hockey games in a day. And where can you be at night? The nightlife. The casino, baby. The you casino. Can have dinner on the casino. It's hit the roulette tables. Yeah. You got yes. restaurants that the kids don't have to go into on the casino. You put them to bed. You go down and gamble. And you think about this. Uh, you say, uh, well, if you talk about Frozen 4, a lot of those guys are of age. They can probably slide into the casino themselves. And a lot of those guys are St. Louis products. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, man. So they already know. Hey, we got to, hey, the big game tomorrow night, man. UConn versus Iowa. Who wins this game and why? Whew. Well, we told you <laughs> Kayla Clark was getting to the Final Four. Yes. You guys said that she was going to get there. We didn't, I think say the she was, we didn't say she was going to win the whole thing, though. I think the buck stops there. I think Gino, I think Gino and them go beat her, man. They gonna they gonna use the same approach like the Pistons used against Jordan. Let them get here, just make sure that them role players don't go off. She but can't they, score eighty points by herself. But see, they got they got she got to turn back around and check Paige Beckers. And before that knee injury, Paige Beckers have Paige Beckers. You you wouldn't even if Paige Beckers wouldn't have injured her knee, you wouldn't have never heard of Caitlin Clark. Because Paige Becker was the top rated uh player coming out of high school that year, her freshman year. Yeah, dude. Caitlin Clark is not gonna guard Paige Beckers. 
She better not, because you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> There's no need. No? There's no need. And that that's how people make mistakes. Trying to put your best player on their best player. Why? So she can no get need. in foul trouble? That's it. You don't want to have to put uh, – because I know Paige Beckers – I know Gino ain't gonna have Paige Beckers checking uh Caitlin. No, you need somebody with size on her. Yeah, it's gonna make her work. Which is gonna probably be Elena Edwards. That's gonna probably be the one that be checking her. Elena Edwards got the size. She's six four, six three, long, and can defend. You kind of got some size, man. Yeah, but but here's here's the issue. How are they gonna handle running her coming around all these screens? That's the thing. Because because the problem with everybody playing Iowa is the ball is always in her hand. Yeah. If you try to pick her up full court and you miss. Then she gets down the floor and you're in a trail position. And then she's going to make everybody else look good. Yeah. If you do let that. her have it and you sag too deep, she's going to pull up from deep and she's going to make it. If you guard her close, they're just going to screen you and she's going to get over. Anywhere it goes, she goes. So you got to figure out how you want to do it. I personally, I would double team her like they do in the NBA. Uh huh. I would see who is not going to make shots or see who I think won't make shots. And I would take that person. And soon as she has the ball, I would go double team her, make her give the ball up early. So. So do you think Gino, you think Gino probably got a game plan in mind for? Her? Oh, I'm sure he does. But you you have to make her give the ball up early. And when they when they try to screen or that high screen, you just double it. That's Don't it. leave her, just double her, just trap her. Every time they go to do that damn high screen, just trap her. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a good game, but I got UConn pulling off the upset. I got a beat now. Who you got, Coach? I don't know. I, I think I were going to find a way to pull it out. And the reason I say that is because the other people around Caitlin are playing out of their mind right now. They got to play out of their mind They're playing with night. so much confidence right now. There's nobody that you can just let go. There's they got one person. I think they need to happen. come out strong. I think Iowa needs to come out strong and uh, just um, enforce their will on uh, UConn because UConn is that type of team, man. As we saw the other night, man, with uh, with uh, USC, if you leave UConn around, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put them out in misery early, because if you let UConn stay in the game, stick around, Gino will find a way to win the basketball game, man. You can't let them stick around, and and, and you saw the other night, man, uh, how you USC was up and they and they let they let UConn stick around and start chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And what ended up happening at the end, Coach? They find a way to win. They find a way to win every fucking time. Gino finds a way to win, man. Because USC ain't no way in hell UConn should have beat UC, USC, man. But USC, dumb shot selection, and let them chip away, chip away, and hell, back paid Beckers and them and that crew. Figure out a way to win that ball game, man. So we got South Carolina and Iowa. Okay, I got South Carolina and UConn. 
Coach, you got South Carolina and Iowa. Does it matter? Do South Carolina cut down the nets? I got South yeah. Carolina and Iowa, too. I think so. I think South Carolina is just too dominant. I got South Carolina and UConn. And do I think – I think South Carolina – is going to squeak past UConn. And, and, and granted, UConn is a year away because next year, UConn, when everybody coming back, UConn is going to be the dominant team in women's basketball again next year because they got everybody coming back next year. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I got I got this lady game, Cox, like we all got them cutting down the nets on a Sunday night, man. Got them cutting down the nets on Sunday night. That's going on over to our men, man. Hey, before we go to the men's, how about this? Haley Van Lith enters the transfer portal. Who is that coach? Haley Van Lith. From uh LSU. <laughs> I guess she didn't like the way Kim Mulkey was running things, I guess, huh? Hey, I guess not. She said hey, this is gonna be deuces. this gonna be her third school in three years. Enough is enough with the damn transfer portal, man. Hey, she's about to get paid to go somewhere else again. Hey man. Name, hey, man. image, and likeness. This transfer, man. back in the day, you had to sit out a year when you transfer. It's yeah, ruin. Man. It's actually ruining college basketball. That and the one and done. And she brought. She got. An, she got an Instagram and OnlyFans. She probably kicking it, dog. Man, kicking it like none other, man. Hey, Purdue and North, North Carolina State, man. Who y'all got winning that game and why? Does the magic stop for NC State on Saturday I afternoon? I mean, I think so, but I think it's going to be a tougher game for Purdue than they think. Because I keep telling everybody, man, DJ Burns is a gangster. He is. He is. He's going to make Zach. He going to make Zach Edias work on defense, unlike Tennessee. Yeah, I'm not. I the don't man call played him the... DJ Burns no more. I call him Zach Randolph Jr. The man played the entire effing game. He sat out for like 33 seconds of actual game time. Who was that? Uh, the Tennessee did not make that dude. Okay. Adu was shit. Sorry, I'm a little biased because I was pulling for Tennessee. Uh -huh. Adu didn't do shit. Uh, the other guy... Uh, um, a Baca, I think, whatever his name was. He was effective. I call him the Ken B. Matumbo Jr. Because, man, he that's what he, he was effective. But every time they grazed Edie, they was calling a damn foul. Mm -hmm. He had 10 fouls against, and he hadn't committed not one foul. You know why? Because your dumbasses kept jacking up threes, and Connect was the only one shooting the damn rock. Everybody was uh, afraid to actually go down the lane and make dude make him get go into his body and, and get a foul call. Make him sweat. She wasn't even sweating. I think DJ go uh take it to DJ him. Gonna, DJ gonna DJ's gonna make his ass work. But 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 you think about it, 16 7 4, man, 7 3. And he got Zaki got long arms, man. He gonna be all to DJ. DJ gonna have to get into his body and put some of that weight on him and stuff. That's what he gonna do. He gonna make his ass have to play some defense. Yeah, but you know what? My heart is telling me North Carolina State, but uh, I think uh, I think Painter is gonna go to the finals, man. I got Purdue. Uh, the Cinderella stops with North Carolina State, man. Purdue go win that one in a close one, man. They can win. Man, give me the Wolfpack. State. You got Wolfpack? Okay. Give me the Wolfpack. Okay. Coach, who you got? NC State or Purdue? Yeah, Purdue. He got Purdue. So me and Coach got Purdue. You got the pack, D. Hey, Alabama and UConn, the nightcap. 
UConn look like, in my eyes, they look like they finna repeat, man. They are just tough all across the board from guard to center to bench to coaching. Hurley is doing another bang up job as coach. Uh, I don't, this title is UConn's to lose, period. Yeah, well, here's the bullshit about all that. You know, their flight got delayed, right? Uh huh. Uh oh. So, you know, they're not going, they didn't get into Arizona to 2 a.m. They won't get into uh, Arizona to 2 a.m. in the morning. Okay. Tonight. Right. Or tomorrow. <laughs> right. Tomorrow. And then, you know, they have all the media day. And Fresh shoot conference. around and practice and all that. While everybody else has already gotten there. I don't know why they wait till today to take off. Well, well apparently, with that being said, <laughs> apparently there was some some plane issues. Interesting. Uh, in, uh, plane issues, and then they couldn't secure a plane to accommodate their whole traveling party. So now they're splitting up the traveling party so that the team can get there first before the rest of the people get there. Wow. Why does that only happen to people who trying to repeat? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, with man. that being said, you know who I'm taking. You're gonna take Alabama probably. Alabama go- dude. I'm them, still them going boy, with them boys man. are scrappy. Hey man, I'm still they going scrappy, with the camps, man. Like is I've seen them like they refuse to die. So coach, they scrappy, man. I, I'm so, gonna pick UConn, but it's gonna be a struggle because everything is gonna be against them. At practice time, everything is about to be adjusted for them. Their whole schedule is about to be flipped around. Yeah. Because you have a routine when you do this, and I'm sure they were using the same routine they used last year as far uh-huh. as time schedules, uh, when they were going to give the kids to do whatever they need to do, when the meals were going to be set up, when they were going to have treatments and therapy and you know stretch sessions and all this stuff. All that is now about to be thrown off kilter. It will be thrown off. So, it's. I think it's going to be a little bit of struggle, but I'm still picking it. Okay, so we got UConn. Dino got Alabama and NC State. Give me that, dog. We got Purdue and UConn. So, Monday night, I'm gonna go with Dino. Alabama, North Carolina State. Who wins the title? Hmm. With a with a slipper steel with a slipper fit in North Carolina State. That Alabama team is scrappy, man. I, I, it pains me to say it. Alabama. SEC. Okay. Now, coach, we got Purdue and UConn. They get past Saturday. They get a chance to get some rest on Sunday, Monday night. Who wins the game? UConn or Purdue? I'm going to go with Purdue. Hmm. Lance Painter gets his first title, huh? Yep. And Zach Eady goes out in a blaze of glory before he flames out in the NBA. <laughs> hey, man. Unlike Coach, man. I got UConn repeat, man. I, I oh, told, don't I, get me wrong. I would love to see a Hurley, you know, repeat. Went, a Hurley of course repeat. you would. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, I talked about this, man. I think they go, UConn will repeat. And I, I just think they go, they go repeat. This is too low. I've been, I've been saying this since the last couple months, man. UConn is going to repeat. If Carolina don't be there, 
And they this jagged off been, the damn game. This should have been Carolina and UConn. And I would have probably sang a different song. But I think UConn is going to repeat. They cutting down the nets again. Dan Hurley is going to get his second title. Period. Point blank. I think you sound like a Cowboys fan with this North Carolina <laughs> UConn bull crap. <laughs> I didn't say it, man. Hey, it's over with. I ain't even see it, man. Hey, man, we got to talk about the big news, man, in the NFL, man. Hey, man. The, uh, oh, my God, man, the uh, Texans and the Bills. It's a big trade that went on. Stephon Diggs is going to the Texans, man. As predicted, not the team, but that he was leaving. But the thing is, will he be the number one down there? You got no. Nico. You got Tank no. Dale. No, the first thing got, they need to do is Schultz. get his ass, get his ass in there, and say, "Hey, look, this is why you're here. We have established chemistry. Don't fuck that up. Play your role." CJ spread the ball around. CJ just don't drop back and look for any particular receiver. Spread it around. <laughs> Just keep getting open. You'll get the ball. Hey man, this is what uh this is what happened today, man. The Texans voided uh the final three years of Stefan Diggs contract, moved all his guaranteed money up. So he's gonna get twenty two point five million dollars this year, and he's free to be a free agent. They're gonna let him walk after this season. So he he's just playing. He a rental. He a rental. So I wouldn't even keep because him. Hey, the hey, Texas that they. I mean, I, I'm gonna get a top flight receiver for because Buffalo is eating most of the contract. But still, I trade them. Trade them where you got value at. They're not gonna trade. They're gonna I see what they can get out. They're gonna see what they can get out of them. This, so so Diggs go off and have an amazing season. They said they are set to let him become a free agent. They moved all his guaranteed money up to this year. So yeah, you, you can test them. the market, but guess what? If you're trying to win, you see what you got here. But if so, you just want to go get is, paid, then go get paid. Dig, hey, because you know his brother ain't numbered a couple hours away in Dallas. But Houston is trending up. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He'd be a fool to leave. You got Tank Dale. You got uh, Nico. Schultz. You got Schultz. And don't forget about Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon coming out the backfield. Oh, and don't forget that they signed Daniel Hunter for defense. Oh, yeah, man. Well, not signed, but they – they, Yeah, they signed him. He was a free agent. Here we are, Virginia. Always find a way to get themselves back in the ball game. It's going to be hard, man. And for all you fantasy folks. It's going to be hard for Jacksonville to try to win that division, dog. They not. It's Houston's to lose. Yeah. I, honestly, uh, honestly, the AFC South has now replaced the the AFC West. But you know what? Hey, I think you got, that, you got Anthony Rich, on, you got Anthony don't Richardson. Stop and say, don't sleep on the Indianapolis Colts. You got though. the Colts. Don't you sleep on them. Sunshine man. and the Jaguars. The Texans. Don't sleep on Who the odd man out. What did Calvin Ridley go to? I'm trying to think the a the other AFC South team. Oh, Titans. Titans on the factor. They're rebuilding. Did he go to the Titans? Who? Ridley? Uh um, Ridley. No. I felt like he went back to Atlanta. No, he did. Let's find out. Calvin Ridley. <laughs> He with the Titans, um, right? He with the Titans. Titans. He with the Titans. They threw a big bag at Ridley. They threw a big bag at him, dog. They had to do something because they got Pollard to replace Henry, but they had no receivers. I mean, Hopkins is still there. That's a nice tandem. They still got they still got Traylon Burks there too. It's who? Traylon Burks, man. They, uh -oh. they dog. You may say who? that. And I may say that, 
But hey, anytime you go pick somebody in the first round, receive is there an the Allen ability? You know how many first round players bust more than actually succeed? Hey, but like I say, they they that's what they picked up, dog. They out got, of the top, they, they got, out of the top twelve picks in last year's draft, who actually bought out from a receiver from standpoint? last year? Because I'm gonna tell you this, man. I would have my my thing is this. I would have completely did something totally different, man. I told you I would have. If I was Chicago, I would have kept Justin Fields, drafted Marvin Harrison. I got mm-hmm. Marvin Harrison, Keenan Allen, and DJ, DJ Moore, Moore, and Cole Clement, Swift. You and Swift in the backfield, and I ain't gonna even say a running moment. quarterback. Yeah. I ain't gonna say that bum Gerald Everett there too, but still that bum. Yeah, your your favorite. And then here's the killer part. He got all weapons. Here's the killer part. They did it to reset the money at the quarterback position. But if you think about it, it sucks. But that's actually they actually did the right thing. They did the league a favor, though. They did the right thing because, but. It may blow up in your face if Caleb is a bust. And then Phil's going and actually ascend to where he was supposed to go. So let me ask you this. If Caleb's a bust, do Eberflus lose his job? He gonna lose his job anyway, I think, man. According to Coach, he shouldn't even be there. But uh, that's a topic for another discussion. Um, Eberflus stinks, man. I mean, he don't have an excuse now because he's got talent. They've they've loaded they've loaded that team up with talent, and um, <clears throat> only question park now is you bringing in a rookie quarterback when you had an established one. Man, evil flu. Yeah, you, you, you missed you missed out on a for sure wide receiver talent. Man, we talk about a uh, uh, game changing wide receiver. Somebody that can that was gonna be there with that young quarterback for a long and, time. Yeah, like immediately make a difference. And you say so, immediate so. impact. Immediate impact. And then look at look at the trio you would have had. Oh my God. That, that they would have, trio would be nasty. Nasty. Keenan Allen. He could mentor Marvin Harrison. DJ Moore. Oh my God. Only thing you didn't only thing. You didn't have with somebody to take top off of defense. Well, but you can get plenty of speed guys. I mean, yeah. do you necessarily think he's a speed guy, or oh, he's just a but solid? Yeah. He's like an Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper, he's kind of like an Amari Cooper receiver. He's not gonna take the top off of defense. But then you got other you got other guys out there too. Uh, them little bit little fast ones that they got on the roster. Uh, Who? that can help out. They got rid of Mooney. He gone. Who was that other little fast cat that they had, man? Mooney. He's gone. I know. Besides Mooney, what's the other little fast dude they had? Uh, besides Mooney, he was the speed guy. Claypool. <laughs> I know you ain't talking about him. Where you go, VP? Right, he gone. Coach, you still there with us? Yo, I guess this cast is faded into the background. But yeah, man, um, <clears throat> the draft's going to be crazy. Even though we had a lot of free agent activity prior to the draft, um, there's still some unknowns. Like, we don't know where, you know, my dark horse is still Spencer Rattler at the quarterback position, but we don't know. <laughs> you still have been on Spencer Rattler, huh? I'm telling you, dog, like, it's always going to be one that you didn't think was going to go that high that actually turns out to be a better pro. Spencer Rattler. It happens every year. If you go look at, go back and look at the drafts, it's every year. A quarterback falls for some odd reason, but actually turns out to be the better pro than than most of the quarterbacks picked in the first round. I wouldn't go with Spencer Rattler though, D. I'm sorry. Well, time will tell. 
You got. But I want to see who's going. I want to see who's going to get uh, uh, Bowers. Oh man. Yeah, that's, that's like question, getting that's man. like getting another that's like another Laporta. Oh, Bowers! Hey, that's that's a steal, man. You think he goes in the first round? No doubt about it. Mid. You be a fool not to pick Bowers up. Mid or late first. Mid. Hmm. He's definitely going mid. Only reason I say that is because I'm looking around the league and a lot of teams have they stud muffin tight end already. Now some got two, like the Eagles. No changes. Yeah. The Eagles got two. So and like I said, a lot of teams already got their tight end. Unless they just taking a flyer on them, it's like, okay, we'll you'll kind of be like a hybrid tight end. Like we'll split you out. And you really ain't gonna never have to block. Cause uh, right. I know the tight end at Buffalo, he was he never blocked. He was always going out on routes. Instant slot receiver. Say what, coach? Instant slot receiver. Oh yeah, it's a mismatch. Oh yeah, all day. Hey, BP, you just dropped out. Where the hell you go? Hold on one second. <laughs> we're, supposed, we're supposed to be done at nine. Yeah, we 12 In minutes over. 730 to, supposed to be 730 to an hour, but he was, you know, doing BP things. Yeah. I think we got everything pretty much covered. We got our picks for the uh for the final four for the men and women. Uh we touched on, I don't know if y'all touched on any NBA. We touched on NFL activity. Uh one no, thing we I know talking about probably, the NBA. Because it's, it's starting to get real close to them uh Milwaukee Bucks fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it'd be fucked up if it was by they end up uh having a worse record by one game. And B B just a week ago, BP was gloating like he's sitting pretty. I said, dog, he get change on the dime. And I what did I say? I said, dog, injuries. And what happened? And Doc injuries. Rivers. And I didn't even have to say Doc Rivers. I was like, injuries. I love Doc Rivers, but he fucking up another team. <laughs> they don't call him the doctor for nothing, huh? <laughs> they should call him Malpractice Rivers. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> they ain't playing no defense. Nope. Nope. But, uh, wow. BP. I don't know what that dude doing, but man, did you uh did you catch that hockey brawl yesterday? Twelve eleven Virginia leads on Dude, like that's old school, like 20 seconds in. Everybody banging except the goalies. And then the old boy from the devils, he wanted no parts of bro. And it was just like he he held up because he could have really beat the shit out, dude, and he just held up. Mm -hmm. I was like, how did you get paired off with this dude? Like, where's y'all the, the New Jersey Devils? Where y'all goon at, man? Everybody still oh. need a goon. They ain't got no goon. You better get one. That's it. It's more it's more bros coming to the league. You, you better get you a goon. The Blues had one for several years. The Blues were good for having a goon at every every Time period I can think of. Mm -hmm. What you say? Yeah. Every time period. Every time period I go back and think about blues, they always had a goon on the squad. You got Tony Twist, Kelly Chase, even though he actually had some skill. Ryan Reeves. Kachuk. Kachuk wasn't a goon. He actually had some skill. He was just a big dude. He was just a big power forward. Um. 
Glenn Featherstone, like this going back to like the late 80s. Um, we always had a goon, Garth Butcher. Um, we kept goons. Well, we had to because we was in the same division as Chicago, and Chicago always had a goon. And Al Detroit. Ford. We were in the same and division. Detroit had Detroit a goon too, too, Bob Probert. Actually, Probert played for the Blackhawks and the Red Wings. And it was a it was it was so bad with that dude, nobody wanted to fight his ass. They were scared of that dude, man. It was like, man, fuck that. I'm not fighting your <laughs> I'm, I'm not good. fighting this country ass nigga. I'm going right to the box. Hey. <laughs> That's funny, man, because I almost fought Bob Probert in a bar. Are you serious? You got you gotta you gotta tell us the story. You you or can you tell us the story? Well, it's funny, man, because way back in the day, I used to do some little security for Kelly Chase when he had his bar. Mm -hmm. And I really was doing, I was really doing it for his wife because his wife ran the bar. And she would close the bar and she would have a whole bunch of money. So I would meet her at the bar and make sure she got home into the house, everything, you know, with the money and everything because he was still playing. So one right. night, <laughs> Kelly says, hey, Corey, why don't you come meet us out at this bar? It was him and Chris Pronger. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. Go down there. Him and Chris Pronger were in the corner of the bar just having some drinks. And it started out with these two muscle head dudes that was trying to egg them on the fight. It's always them, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, but they would. It's always the meatheads, huh? Yeah. And then <laughs> I showed up and was having drinks and uh, they didn't really appreciate them kind of you know, kicking it with me, having drinks, whatever. So we just kind of turned our backs and they start talking real grimy, you know, you know, saying what they say. And, and, and Pronger politely says to these guys, you really don't know this guy. You really don't want a piece of him. <laughs> you barking up the wrong tree. And, oh yeah. And he says, uh we we don't need any kind of trouble. We just out trying to have a good time. That's he, it, that's all. And he says, but you really don't want a piece of this guy. So we keep drinking, having a good time, whatever. So a few people down from the meatheads is by pro. <laughs> <laughs> and they probably didn't even know it was him. No, because Bob Probert has his teeth in, he's trying to talk to chicks or whatever. But as soon as the chicks realize that Kelly Chase and Chris Pronger are in there, you know. They dip. Yes. <laughs> so they down there where we are. So, you know, they down there talking, and he and he's one of those guys that don't take no for an answer. So the girls are like down there talking, 
to Kelly or Chris. And I mean, it's just harmless conversation. But Probert is now starting to get liquored up. Got that oil in him. Yeah, he keeps coming down there. And uh, Pronger says to the young ladies, is he bothering you? <laughs> and they were starting to get annoyed. Mm -hmm. So Pronger says to uh, Probert, he's like, hey, man, can you kind of knock it off? And and Prana was like, you're yeah, being annoyed. Quick fluid in him. Yeah, yeah that like, oil. Yeah, he goes, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that do it fluid in him. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, do it fluid. fluid. <laughs> he said, yeah, that do it fluid. I said, like that. I want to use that, man, to do it fluid. You're, you're being annoying. <laughs> you're being a dick. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I'm being a dick. And he's like, we're not on skates now. You want a piece of me? This is this is Chris saying that. This is that's Pro Probert saying this oh, to Chris. The Chris. <laughs> and Chris just starts smiling and drinking in his face. And the more he drinks and smiles, the more Probert is getting pissed off. And that's what the first And and now it's becoming a spectacle because he's like walking up on on Pronger, and, you know, now people are, like, starting to walk around like, man, Probert and Pronger about to get into it in a bar. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. Bye. You just... <laughs> so, you're like, I know, I know you're like, damn, this is supposed yeah. to be a peaceful night, man. I just I came here to have some there. drinks with my hockey guys, and here right. we go. So, so I'm just Slap kind of shot. standing yeah. next to, Pro, to Pronger, and Probert is getting close. So I just kind of put my arm in between them and I'm like, Bob, just back back off. You know, just just let it go. Nobody's trying to fight. You know, the girls, the girls want you to leave them alone. And he looks at Promner and goes, Who's this guy? Five relievers only And I just said, Hey man, don't just don't worry about who I am. Just just Chill out. Beat it. <laughs> and then he looks at me and goes, you know who the F I am? I'm like, yeah, man, I know who you are. Who cares? Oh, shit, that didn't go over well. <laughs> I'm like, you're being annoying, man. Just back off. Can, can people just have a good time? It's not a hockey game. It's not a hockey fight. Who cares? Just back up. Mm -hmm. So now he starts getting annoying with me. And I'm like, man, just, just go away. So then he proceeds to pluck his teeth out. Oh, fuck. <laughs> when you pluck your teeth out, you ready to fight, man. I'll get your ass whooped, man. Don't you pluck <laughs> your teeth out on me, goddamn. And, and I'm like. Put the dentures back in, man. I'm like, wow, th this is not really what you want to happen. Because not only am I in the bar, but it's a bunch of my friends in there. And this ain't going to end the way you think this motherfucker go but, in. Buddy. But it's like, it's like you might think you about to fight me, but it's a whole bunch of people in here that's going to throw your ass out the frame. That's ready. <laughs> ready. Uh, yes. Ready like that's, a hot pot of grits. I'm like... <laughs> That's gonna I'm like fuck like, out your ass. I'm buddy. like Bob. This is not. This is not really what what you want. We're not trying to do this. So he proceeds to tell me, "Hey, we can go outside." I said, "Bob, you don't want to go outside." <laughs> I'm like, because you have everything to lose. I don't have shit to lose. <laughs> I said, because if we go outside and you swing on me, you going to get your ass beat because you have no idea who's with me. Right. I said, for all you know, the bouncers and like 12 other people might be ready just to whoop your ass. Mm -hmm. I said, just to straight to say, I whoop yeah, Bob Provost's ass. Because you do play <laughs> for a rival hockey team. 
who who people in this area don't like you. So Never you might want to settle your ass down. Rest in peace, Bob Probert. <laughs> Got to say that. So, so after all this starts going down, the bouncers just kind of get in between him and me and was like, "Hey, man, let's let's just go ahead and go." And I'm like, "Bob, yeah, let, let let's just go, just go." You had a good night. Let them get you where you need to go. So, this don't end well. I said, because th this could be something that you live to regret. And Pronger and, them, <laughs> Pronger and them are just leaning against the bar, just pouring their beers up, just smiling. Chilling. And Chase is like, hey, man, you handled that real good. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I, I, I'm not down here to fight nobody. I figure I get and, it, folks. And, uh, here's and, Bob Proper, if you don't know who he is. This and is he the guy really the reference. Be down here trying to fight nobody. <laughs> the Canadian tough guy is what he called himself. I'm like, dude, this shit is not what this this shit, this shit ain't a game. Hell no. When man. you on the ice and fighting, that's one thing. When you get down here in 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 it's this real part life. of the town with these people and you. And people who really don't like you and they didn't got liquored up too, they're gonna fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> Big Big oh man. See, right here he's he's fighting uh, Donna Brashear. And everybody, if you don't know, Donna Brashear was the one that Marty McSorley assaulted him with his stick and knocked him unconscious. Yeah. Damn. And man, the bouncers got him out of there and he left. And you know, about 45 minutes later, me and Pronger and Kelly Chase and then walked out of there and some other clowns got into it with the meatheads and got to fighting right outside the door and they was all splattered in the street. The meatheads. <laughs> and we was like, hey, man, let's just go. Hey, man, could you believe Bob Prober been gone for 14 years? He passed away in 2010, man. That's crazy, yeah. man. Man, it's been a long time since Prober checked up out of here, man. Yeah, man. Before him, man, the, the, the villain for me was Al Secord. That motherfucker. Coach, you remember Al Secord? Yeah, man. But Bob Prober, man, he was, man. Hey man, Bob Prober, man, cocaine and man, he mixed the cocaine He's a wild and boy. alcohol. He was wild, man. Say, yeah. Hey, when they say sex, drugs, and rock and roll, god damn it, it should be uh it should be my boy Gene Simmons picture and Bob Prober right by him and shit, man. Sex, <laughs> drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> Prober died of a but, heart attack at the age of 45, man. But, but dude, they, he was really cool until he got so fucked up. He started yeah. drinking. He was but, always a good time, man. You could laugh and joke with that dude, man, and everything was good. Because I had been in the bar with him and seen people try to pick fights with him. And oh, they're going to try him, like, you know, just to yeah. see. When, when, when I wasn't in there with Chase and Prana, just in that same bar. And he would be in there. And they say Probert had CTE as well, man. Yeah, man. I can see him with CTE, man. Because, man, all them fights this motherfucker that had, man. <laughs> that motherfucker. I seen, I seen my first year of, of hockey fights. We This 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 started, BP. We was talking about the, the brawl yesterday between the Devils uh -huh. and the Rangers. Like, right at the opening puck drop, they just just thought, let's get it. I'm trying to pull it up. <laughs> everybody, nah. everybody on the ice dropped them except the goalies. Except the goalies. And I'm like, what the fuck y'all waiting on? 20 <laughs> seconds in. Man. Everybody was squabbling, man. Everybody, everybody except the goalies. And it's been a while since we had one of them brawls. The worst, the worst fight I seen was still the St. Paddy's Day massacre. Man, man Coach, Coach, man. remember that this was Blues. They were at Chicago. It was on St. Paddy's Day. Mm -hmm. 
Damn. That's when tonight that M I C D S. Hey man, some real real hockey fights. But let me ask y'all a quick question. I know we way over. I asked this at work. I said favorite hockey movie. Y'all might not have seen some of them, but I'm gonna give you three. Uh, slap shot. Gotta have slap shot. If you haven't seen slap shot, you need to go back and watch that shit. Yeah, slap shot is hilarious. <laughs> uh, Young Bloods. Miracle on Ice. Miracle on Ice Ducks. was good. Mighty Ducks. <laughs> that, that's the top four hockey movies for me. Young Bloods is really good too. Young Bloods is underrated, and a lot of people missed it. Hey man, Miracle on Ice. Slap shot, slap shot. That shit is. It's like airplane, but it's about hockey. You right. say Mighty, Mighty Ducks too, huh? I mean, it gotta go with the money dust. It was just, it's it's cheesy but good. God damn it! You ever tell you my best hockey movie, man? Happy fucking Gilmore. <laughs> Dad, that's not a hockey movie. It's a golf, <laughs> it's a golf movie with a. That's a golf a movie. Hey, it's a hockey scene. Hey, happy! You let Happy Gilmore tell him he was a goddamn hockey player. He wasn't no golfer. He was a hockey player. And, and it had a football and a water boy. Oh now, if you guys go, okay, Adam Sandler, I'm going to go water boy. Hey, man. Uh, man. But go back was... and people will go back and watch Slapshot and you're going to laugh your ass off. Wow, man. When we were boys, I'm looking at all the hockey movies that was out That there. was a good one, too. That was a good we one, too. When we were boys. Yep. Then they had Black Ice. Mm-hmm. Then they then they had uh, Black Eyes just came out last year, I think. Yeah. Then they had Ice Kings. Then they had uh, what else? They had Pee Wee Slapshot Three. Damn, they had a lot of Slapshot. But the D2. original Slapshot. Who? D two. They had D one. They, they had three. They had three Mighty Ducks. Damn. Hey man. I got to talk about this, man. Hey, man. I don't know if you, you guys are in in the St. Louis area, man. Can y'all tell me, man? This was going to be my what the hell, but I can't wait, man. What the hell was Lee Bogan Jr. thinking about out at MICDS, man? <laughs> what, what I miss now? <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, don't you, Coach? Yeah, but I didn't hear this story. Lee Bogan, man, uh, he's the JV basketball coach. He was arrested for sending oh, don't tell me. pornographic photos to students over Instagram. He was sending he was sending dick pics to the uh, high school students at MICDS. And this is the crazy thing. This is what really had me thinking. They had me like. He said he was sending dick pics to other guys' dicks, not his. And the guy married, got kids, man. Hey, man, look, I'm telling you like this. just Because my what the hell last week was about these teachers just straight out of pocket. They gone, man. <laughs> man, this dude, hey, man. They might get you to a point where you got to straight homeschool your kids, man, because these teachers is gone. And you know, and the sad part about it, my boy, T, shout out to my boy T Wallace, man, Travis, man. Travis hired him. Uh, Lee, Lee was at uh, Jennings with Travis. Sometimes, man, everybody ain't equipped to go to the next level with you, man. Travis should have left his ass at Jennings. <laughs> or he, he, he may could have sent some pics to some of the students at Jennings. But damn it, God damn it, we talk about MICDS. We talk about the prestigious private institution. That's like Principia or Priory. And you don't say, hey man, they they got whistleblowers out in this motherfucker, man. Incarnate word. He's been charged with two accounts of first degree uh, sexual harassment and one count of furnishing pornographic material to minors. First Willie of all, jail time. Willie do jail time. Yeah. Uh, he's 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 sitting down on a hundred seventy thousand dollar bond. He ain't a flight risk, but he' finna get some time. 
Well, I'm just saying, like, why would you say? <sighs> or people just dumb now. Let, 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 let me, let's just keep it a buck. Has technology made people dumb? Mm-hmm. It has. Because this shit, we knew this was going on for decades. This ain't the first time this shit happened. Let, we know that. But these motherfuckers are always getting popped, and it's always them sending some shit on their phone. Then these goofballs, like, it's other people. Oh, the baby mama won't, the baby daddy killed. She trying to get Pookie to do it, and they texting about it. And then trying to delete the shit like they can't go recover the text messages. I guess this is my thing, man. (laughs) I I, I guess this is my thing, man. You are... And and, and you know what? I'm more concerned about my boy Travis, man, than anybody. Fuck fuck Bogan, man. Fuck Lee. Because he's a goddamn pedophile, man. He's a pedophilia, man. Send it, hey. I have no love. Put, put him in there. Put him in there with saying with uh saying touch me. Yeah, man. He a goddamn predator, man. And then <laughs> for him, for him, for him to say he sent dick. He say the dick pics he sent was other men's dick pics. Come on, cuz. Oh, you. So you telling me you finna send other man's other man's joints 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 to people, man? You gonna say, oh, come on, man. Who sends other people's penile pictures to people, man? Get the fuck out of here. Zip <laughs> his ass up get him the fuck out of here. Come on, man. Now you almost <laughs> <laughs> choke my pistachios. <laughs> man, come on, dog. You gonna send another man's penile picture to... Hey, Brett Forb did it. And, 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 and it was near and dear to my... Uh, it was kind of close to me because uh, the young lady who he sent the pics to was best friends with my niece, was best friends with my brother's daughter, who's out there, uh, who's a, a sophomore at MICDS. So she got an all expensive paid trip to the Pulse Convention too, huh? Oh my God, man. <laughs> hey man, this guy, hey. My boy Travis brought him in here and they hired him on the simple fact that Travis, you know, hey, Travis, hey, he coming in, our JV coach, and he does this. Man, I just hope my boy Travis is safe, man, because uh, shit like this, man, when you get the chancellor and you get the the board and the uh, uh, alumni, hey, man, when you get them guys involved, the people that's paying your salary? Got their loss. I know what do you think, know. Coach, man? I shave my head. Yeah, I'm, I'm speechless. Hey, man. Keep your hair and your because I don't know what. I, what that's what, some what, dumb, what? dumb, 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 dumb stuff. Man, why would you send, your, send these to high school girls? Out of everybody you could have sent them to. You could have went on OnlyFans, man. You know, it's called don't do it. Like, don't send anything. Come on, man. All of our conversations are in person. First of all, man, you 27. And these little girls probably 16, 17 years old. Come on, dog. Let's jump. Come like on. I said, man, I think the technology is literally making people dumb. How many so dumbass crimes have you seen the last 10, 15 he, years? He can't go within 500 feet of any school. He on the list. Yeah. yeah. He that means you can't, you can't work at a school anymore. Hey man, Good luck finding it, a job. This is no longer the felony. Defense. It's a felony. Good luck finding a job. Hey man, he needs to move out the state, man. He gonna have to move out the fuck country. Yeah, he at least move out. The, you better move out. Of, you better move out of St. Louis, Missouri. I tell you that. No, he's gonna have to move out of the country because as soon as they do run a background check on his ass, 
that flag gonna hit. And this is the thing too. They say more students have yet to come forward. Man, more students. Dummy, go to the titty bar. You gotta get your rocks off. Take your ass to the titty bar. Where it's acceptable. <laughs> take your take your ass down on West Floss in the fur. <laughs> down on West Floss. You can get you a bopper that man, God. <laughs> I I I'm I'm speechless, man. I'm Wait, speechless, go ahead man. and say it before you get what? Get you a bopper down there and stuff down on West Floss in the fur. God damn me. Hey, what about 50, 50, 50 bucks? Fuck no. We talk about 20. A dub, a hot dub. You get you get a half and half for a dub, nigga. Shit. Uh, we, we talking about around the world, man. He 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 need the he need the full meal deal. Hey man, she may not have no fresh in her mouth, but hey, you supposed <laughs> to get a half and half for a dub. You pull it out of dub for that half and half, man. Not the half and half. He's getting a half and half for a dub. Hey, just go to the titty bar. It's cheaper. No, no, no. That half and half on the street is cheaper. Now, you taking a gamble. She ain't got no teeth in her mouth. Oh, you taking a gamble, all right. Oh, you taking a straight-up <laughs> shotgun gamble on the street, man. <laughs> she ain't got no teeth. Hey, not a teeth the first in her head, man. Oh, damn, that's funny. You said man, take I'm your ass down. West Lawson. West Lawson and Fur. If you keep on walking back towards Lawrence, <laughs> going back to Lee, and, hey man, over in that area, oh man, I hate that area. And then you could just keep going right down Grand. It's an hourly motel. Yeah, the that Ebony. Bit, but, but, yeah. That for an hour. Yeah, they rented out. Hey, they rented out about a half an hour, dog. Half an hour. You only got to go the whole hour. Spend, hey, you spent eighteen, nineteen bucks. You get that half hour. You straight. Boy, you know what's waiting inside that motherfucker? Bed bugs, <laughs> hey man, dope needles. Goddamn me, motherfucker knocking on the door. <laughs> Shit, man. Every time I ride past him, like, how the fuck is this place still open? Because <laughs> you got old heads that get that got they goddamn check today. They got this first of the month check today, and they going down there and take care of the hey. They got a little change and they put they paid their bills and stuff. Now they got they they got, they got a little, little residual. They got a little residual to go down there. They already got their prescription. They pop one of them blue boys and they finna go down on the stroll. See these old heads get slick though, man. They bring them back to their house. They saving money. They saving money. They gotta pay the same price, but they saving oh, money on the hotel. And these old heads bring them back to their house. And they try to get an all nighter and stuff because they didn't pop the little blue boy. They go try to get them for the same price. You know, if you go to the hotel, <laughs> you out, you out of there in an hour and stuff. I'll bring you back to my house. Hey, you you, you gotta stay out here for a minute, baby girl. <laughs> you may you may hey the old head say you may like it out here. Once you like it oh, out here, damn. hey, well, hey, we turn hey. this from from a transaction. Until you a live in now, you your roommate. Yeah, you you schedule. <laughs> hey, look, if you can't, if 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 the grand is booked, you book it back up grand, bust you a left on natural bridge, bust you a right on King's Highway and hit the carousel. Oh, if that if the carousel is busy, go straight down natural bridge, down till you get a block pass, good fellow. Hang a left. Hang a quick right at the Vegas, baby. You're going to be in between those three. You're going to find a vacancy, damn it. You'll find some vacancy, man. Hey, D. Hey, hey, we, uh, we clown. We clowning tonight, dude. Hey, man. We go, man. <laughs> hey, man. Let me ask you this. Does Travis lose his job, Coach Court? Oh, shit. Who? Does Travis lose his job out of MIC? Yes, man. What job? He ain't got no job. Travis do got a job. Travis, the head coach. Travis Wallace. My boy Travis, man. Travis brought Travis brought this guy in to be his JV coach. And he coached the JV last year. But oh, that's do, so they, funny. Do, do, do they get rid of Travis because 
He's associated with this guy, and he brought this guy into the school. It's a lot of conversations going on behind closed doors right now about Travis. Damn, man. One of the best I'm just going to say that right now. But Travis ain't had nothing to do with it, man. He distanced himself from this guy. He don't have nothing to do with it, though. But because he hired him and brought him into the program, he's guilty by association, you're saying? A lot of conversations going on behind closed doors about <laughs> Travis. <laughs> Hey man, I can speak on my boy Travis, man. He's a good dude, man. No character flaws or nothing, man. He Except being character. friends with that trifling motherfucker. There it is. <clears throat> Shit, man. I can't say nothing else, man. If I'm not mistaken, I think I think Travis coached this kid, man. He coached this guy when Travis Travis was the head coach over at Jennings. For years, you remember that coach? Mm -hmm. But see, Travis, you know, I think Travis coached this guy because the guy 27 and Travis like 45. So I, I'm quite sure Travis coached him over at Jennings when he was over there, had his stint at Jennings. Man, God, dog, I just hate this, man. Hate this for the sport, man. Hate this for the sport, man. Hey man, that's it, man. We can put a pin in this, man. Yeah, thanks for staying on late yeah, with us. Please do, because we've been on way too long. Sorry, man. We went out. We got all the way out the car and went to a car lot, kicked the tires and everything. Yeah, looked at some used cars. Yep. Hey man, but that's try all to, right. Try to, though, hustle, man. try to hustle a man for a better rate. Yeah, looked at some wreckage. <laughs> Like we went to the auto to the junkyard, we bought some parts to put on our pick, pick and pull. We went to pick and pull, man. He was trying, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, you wrench it, <laughs> mm. <laughs> and they changed it. It is you wrench it. It was it used to be pick and pull. Oh, there's still a pick and pull. Oh, yeah, <laughs> hey man. And, and and we saved a lot of money on our car insurance by switching to Geico, too, man. And we did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. We yes, did. Sir. <laughs> And and, and and we're staying tomorrow at the Red Roof Inn where they'll leave the light on, man. Hey, man. We got my boy Dino's. CC, who's not here with us. Kane Related, who's not here with us. True Dog, who's not with us. Myron, who's not with us. Chris Story and Coach Rick. Staff Philly. You know where Myron is. Myron is on the side of a milk carton somewhere. Somewhere, man. Hey, man. Parts unknown. This, this is hey, this has been a great show, man. Dino's your boy, the uh the National Semi Pro Baseball Hall of Fame of People's Champ and the National Semi Pro Baseball Hall of Fame of Coach Corey. We signing and, out. And the man who almost whooped Bob Prober's ass. And the Bob Prober. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the Bob Prober buster. Pause. Pause. <laughs> Not the Bob Prober Damn, coach, you never right. told me that story. Oh man, you held out. You should have been told me that shit. <laughs> no, hey, man. man, man, what no man need to tell that story. Man, that's hilarious. Hey, coach, what you say was understood. Don't gotta be explained. Hey, understood. Hey, man, we all right, y'all. We out. Check us out. Peace. Holla. Oh,